Hey, hey, party people. This is a follow-up to my five ways to improve video. And it might seem a little bit backwards, but basically what happened is I posted my how to practice five ways to improve video. And then I got a bunch of comments saying, but Zoe, where do I start? Okay. So this video is going to go over five ways to start drawing anything. Something I say in the classroom a lot is you have to learn how to walk before you learn how to run. And so this video is going to go over how to learn how to walk. A note to start. Always use a visual reference as often as you can. Even illustrators who have been in the trade for decades prefer using a visual reference. It helps for when you're making things up later. Like when I'm designing and I'm designing a velvet skirt and you know, I can't use a visual reference because I'm designing it, I'm making it up in my head, right? But I can draw from my knowledge of previously observed velvet drapes and how velvet catches the light. And so in my design, my velvet looks as close to real velvet as possible. And when I draw figures in poses that I make up in my head, I use my knowledge of similar poses, you know, this arm pose from this drawing and these leg poses from this drawing. I use that knowledge from previous drawings and practice to create the new poses. Even if you're more interested in abstraction, you should learn veristic drawing first, okay? Because that's gonna be your foundation for playing with abstraction. And the more you understand realistic bodies, the more interesting and a concrete foundation for your abstraction that you have. For a clear example of this, I recommend that you research Picasso's 11 lithographs of the bull, where he starts by drawing veristic, realistic drawings of a bull and then he processes the abstraction. Here is something you don't need to get started. You do not need a bunch of expensive tools. And for these exercises, I'm using some rather inexpensive paper. This paper is Strathmore brand and within the Strathmore brand, all the yellow cover ones are their budget friendly student priced papers. And this is just regular pencil sketching paper and just some pencils I have laying around. I don't have a strong graphite pencil brand preference, eraser, some photos I printed off the internet, you know, and then uh, I'm going to use some stuff found around my house to draw. Start by drawing basic shapes, circles and squares. Actually, you really want to get good at drawing right angles, 90 degree angles, from different angles on your paper. Because you're going to use it as a reference point a lot. Like, oh, this elbow is slightly less than 90 degree angle. This knee, this leg is bent at a, and it's slightly more than a 90 degree angle. You know, things like that. Practice your lines. I hear students say, Zoe, I have such a strong grip on my pencil and my hand starts cramping after drawing for a little while. It's like, no, you have to practice drawing lightly. So practice draw lightly, practice draw dark, practice different lines. You see this feathering thing I'm doing right now? Do you see how not attractive that looks? Okay. Get out of the habit of these short, hesitant little feathering strokes and practice longer, smoother lines. Let me tell you a little illustrator secret. Line quality, it hides a lot of errors. I see them in critique all the time. If a person has good line quality, people don't notice mistakes as much. <laughs> it's true. You should probably draw anatomically correct and all those good things, but 
really like focus on drawing good lines. After that, start drawing things that are simple shapes. Stuff you can find around your house. Fruit and vegetables are really great options. You know, a bunch of grapes. They're kind of basically circles, but they're not. And I want you to really observe the actual oval circle shape and draw them. I'm using a sunglass case, a flashlight, and a cup. And you might be looking at my drawing and thinking that looks really not like what you're seeing, but keep in mind that I'm sitting at a different angle than my camera. And so I'm looking at these objects and drawing from these objects at a different angle. But yeah, just pick up some simple shapes around the house and start drawing them. Candles, books, kitchen stuff, and as you practice, practice more and more complex shapes. Here are some things that are not good to start off with. Don't use anything metal, because the reflective surface might trip you up a little bit. Also, any anything else that's reflective, like glass. Don't draw anything with too much text. It'll probably distract you from the shapes and lines that you should be focusing on. And nothing see-through. Because again, we're starting simple, and so these items are just kind of make things more complicated. And you can try drawing glass things and metal things and shading shiny things as you improve. In this part of the video, I have turned off all of my studio lights except for the one lamp that is coming from the upper left-hand corner. And I want you to do the same. Take your simple object drawings, and the still lifes that you've created and put them under a lamp, set it at a diagonal and dim the rest of the room so that you can really see the light and shadow uh, the most clearly. I have a playlist called the General Illustration Skills Playlist and it goes over how to shadow and how to blend in different media. But for now, focus on the placement of shadows how curves make the top of that sunglass case round, how light bounces up. If you can see how the white of the palette bounces up onto the bottom edge of that flashlight, okay, you see that? Those are the things that I would like you to observe. Really pay attention to shadow shapes and shadow placement. They will help your drawings look 3D when you're rendering them. As you practice and get more comfortable and more proficient at drawing and shading basic shapes like cylinders and boxes, you're going to move on to more complex shapes and I'm going to show you two methods that I use to practice more complex shapes. This first one is the grid method. And long story short, you're going to take your visual reference and draw a grid on top of it with a clear graph ruler. Now, I am using tracing paper on top of my visual reference because I like to keep using my visual reference for future demos and stuff, but you don't need to put the tracing paper on top for your own personal practice. But just take a ruler and draw a grid on top. And I would not spend much time trying to make the grid be perfectly symmetrical. Like I know this cello is a symmetrical object, but I'm not going to set the grid so that one of the verticals is exactly in the middle of the cello. Spend a little bit more time than me <laughs> and make sure that your grid is accurate. Then on your paper, draw another grid. I would recommend that you use a ballpoint pen so that when you're erasing your pencil and your mistakes and whatnot, you still have your ink pen grid on top. I'm using the same measurements, one inch square, but you don't have to. You can scale yours up if you want. 
The point of this exercise is that it really makes you focus on what is going on in each square. When you start drawing more complex shapes, it's very easy to get overwhelmed like, oh, uh, here's this curvy cello I've never drawn before. How do I, what, what do I start with? And if you just study one square at a time, it can really help you out, really focus, like focus on this one square instead of it just being this kind of overwhelming mass of shapes it's like oh okay the f holes are here and i've put them on the grid exactly in the middle by accident oops and there's the bridge and the bridge is really close to the center of the f holes and here's the fingerboard how wide is it it starts off like about half the width of one of my grids and then it narrows towards the scroll so you're really like breaking it down into parts and it can help a lot of people from getting overwhelmed when you are working on more complex shapes. Another method I like to use is to layer out the composition. You know, a lot of people have this mistaken idea that true artists or all true artists just start drawing the shape right away. And that can be a goal, an ideal for some styles, but most people don't start there. Okay? And that's something, a goal that you build towards. And what I like to do is layer the composition by figuring out the angles of everything. Now, normally I would draw a lot, you know, these first layers, I would normally draw them a lot softer, but I am drawing them stronger than usual so that the camera will really pick it up and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But first of all, if I'm learning how to draw figures or teaching myself how to draw figures, you know, feel free to break it down into smaller elements first. Like learn how to draw some legs, study some leg anatomy, figure out feet and, you know, foreshortened toes and things like that. And then study how to draw some biceps. And then, you know, then you can start later putting them together. That's not a method that works for everyone. I am just simply offering methods to simplify the learning process. So here I'm just focusing on drawing the legs and I'm trying to get the angles of the thighs and calves and feet correct. Because when you get the angles correct, then you get the proportions correct. And when you get the angles and proportions correct, you're mostly there. You're, <laughs> you've got the pose, you've got the composition, you're just filling in with muscle shapes after that. There are a lot of great anatomy books out there. If you are interested in becoming more proficient at figure drawing, you should definitely pick up a figure drawing book. Uh, I've been using... Anatomy for Artists by David Rubens since college. I enjoy it because it's not like a medical text with, you know, every ligament and every tendon detailed, but just overall anatomy for people who are interested in drawing it, not necessarily people who are going to do surgery. <laughs> so I'll drop a link to that book in the description box below and know the writer, the publisher, they don't know anything about me. That's not sponsoring this video or anything like that. But yeah, there are a lot of anatomy books out there. I recommend you pick one up. I hope at this point you have picked up on the theme, break it down into manageable chunks, practice those manageable chunks until you have become somewhat more proficient, and then move on to something a bit more complex, practice that, and then move on to something more complex. I have a lot of these like sayings in my classroom and in my videos, you know, hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic. In my classrooms, you know, students would tell me during demo all the time, Zoe, you make it look like magic. Zoe, you must be made of magic. You make it look so easy. It's like, well, no. I've been drawing almost my entire life. It is literally practice, not magic. And, you know, you see these you know, workshops and seminars where they're like, oh, you know, you can learn how to draw in a day, blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, this video, it's like a short 15-minute tutorial, but 
essentially I'm giving you the instructions and the basis for you to go and practice. I am not promising that you're going to learn how to draw in 15 minutes. You're most definitely not going to learn how to draw in a day. And so if it doesn't happen for you right away, don't get discouraged. Hashtag, it's hard because it's hard, not because there's anything wrong with you. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. If you learned something new today, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell because notifications are still broken on YouTube. Thank you. Go check out my other playlist for more tutorials on figure drawing, both fashion and not necessarily fashion figure drawing different tutorials on painting and rendering and using different media. Go have fun, explore, learn, practice, all the things, and I will see you in the next video.